Who are the Sharks? They're entrepreneurial leaders in the North Texas Conference churches with a passion for reaching new people for Christ. The Reverend Debbie Lyons serves as the senior pastor at First United Methodist Church, Winsboro. Her passion for community engagement has earned her the mayor's key to the city. Philip Neely, a lay member at Whaley United Methodist Church in Gainesville, has more than 20 years of experience in business development and currently serves as president and CEO of Trident Process Systems. The Reverend Sylvia Wang serves as the senior pastor at First United Methodist Church, Archer City. As chair of the conference's Journey Towards Racial Justice coordinating team, she helps develop strategies to create an equitable future for all people in the North Texas Conference. Greg Hickman, lay leader at Whitesboro United Methodist Church, is the owner and CEO of First Texas Home Health, a leading home health care system. The Reverend Dr. Andy Stoker is an interfaith leader who has served as a United Methodist pastor for more than 20 years. Today, he is Chief Engagement Officer at the Thanksgiving Foundation. Jessica Vargas, Mission Coordinator in the North Texas Conference Center for Church Development, supports leaders across the conference as they identify new ways to engage their communities for Christ. First into the spark tank is Pastor Doris Smith of Mount Zion United Methodist Church in Paris, Texas. Their Bridging the Gap ministry seeks to connect seniors in the church with students in the community in need of tutoring and after school engagement. Well, this idea came to me because of the new generation. And I feel that the older generation need to be able to understand where the new generation is and a new generation need to be able to understand where the older generation has been and how can we bridge the gap in between. We have to listen and learn from one another. Our hope is to be able to bridge the gap with the older generation, with the younger generation through technology. Well, good afternoon, Sharks. I am Doris L. Smith from Mount Zion United Methodist Church in Paris, Texas. I'm the pastor of the church. And here with me are several of the members who came in support of this. Uh, Bridging the Gap is the name of our proposal that we are going to present to you all today. And so we are asking for $10,000 for Bridging the Gap. And that consists of technology. That consists of asking for tablets, that consists of putting a app on these tablets for reading comprehension, also being able to take the youth and children on special trips in order for them to see some things that they have not seen before. Uh, even also asking and requesting for a licensed counselor to come in and sit and talk to these kids, uh, including food and snacks that we have to give them in order for them to be there and to make sure that they're okay. Also, we're asking for Bibles to be able to give to the children because most come, they don't have a Bible. And even Bible and biblical literature, such as the John Wesley literature, that I am pushing so hard and heavy because we don't want to lose the children to the street. We want to bring the children within the church. And I do know that the John Wesley three simple rules, do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God, is one of our profound principles that we have within the United Methodist Church. Also, to promote uh, any swag or literature, t-shirts, anything that says Bridge Miguel, the unit that Mount Zion can have that will help these kids and people within the community that surrounds the church would know that that's what Mount Zion is about. So I, I also know that Mount Zion Building the Gap program aims to help close the learning gap for the children and students within that community and to also bring a safe and supportive place uh, for the kids to come at Mount Zion United Methodist Church in order to grow academically with uh, volunteers within the church and even the people within the community. Also, the reading comprehension portion that we talked about putting on the tablet, it is positively affecting when students are motivated and engaged and encouraged uh, to be able to learn because we have been faced with several children they're not on their reading level. They're not where they need to be. 
but the church is a support group. And in our building, the GAP proposal promotes a multi-generation approach to reach the children and the youth. And I also, our, our proposal valued not only the internal, but also the community outreach with children and youth, whether they are already connected uh, to faith community or not. But Mount Zion building the bridge proposal aims create, created creativeness that which it will support the children and youth academically, even with discipleship. And it helps them to develop a spiritual sense of what the church is doing. You have to be able to read to be able to understand. And what we preach and teach within the church, we want no one left behind. So that is our mission, that is our goal. But most importantly for us is that we want the children and the youth to associate the church with someone who, is, who, who cares about them. We want to be that place that makes them feel like they are being seen, they are being heard, and that they can experience the love of God in conjunction with expanding their horizon. And, and that's really our hope at Mount Zion United Methodist Church. And we are also looking forward to building something new within the community and bringing everyone on board. So Doris, I am so glad that you clarified some of your mission. I didn't hear in your proposal as much about the educational foundation of this, the field trips that are gonna expose the kids. Um, in, in your proposal, I think it's also important that you're giving them a place to um, you know, vent and talk about bullying and their fears and their worries. Um, but I think what you've just shared with us today will definitely take you from zero to hero. I believe in you. I, I believe in you, Doris, what you've done, where you've been. So I'm just going to start out with a partial deal for you. And hopefully some of my co-sharks will also buy in after they've asked their questions. I'm going to start, start you with 2500 and my big question to you is to do this every single day after school. And you said it's a Wednesday, right? We will do it uh, Wednesday. We could do it Wednesdays and then also make it more effective when I'm there. Uh, I'm there for Friday through Sunday, uh, make it on a Saturday. And I realize that people want to keep their weekends, but I am one that wants to stand out front and do what it takes to help these kids get where they need to go. So, so what day are you going to do this? Are you doing it two days or one day? It's going to be two days. Two days. Yes. I see all your lovely volunteers here that are willing to support this ministry. Where are the rest of your volunteers going to come from? This is a big job. Well, what, we, what uh, our proposal is is that we're going to reach out to other churches within the community that has uh, problems and issues with being able to, to get the kids on board and keep them on track. We have churches that sit around our church on every corner. So that is not uh, a problem at all. Matter of fact, we have uh, united with one of the bigger churches, like the P Blocks, during our church anniversary. And that pastor is on board with what we're doing and think that it's an excellent idea. But again, they would, they're limited with resources as well. So if we can pull in some of their people to come and help us, that would be excellent. Have you been in touch with the NAACP and the Northwest Texas workforce? They are members of our church, and they are willing to help. Okay, good. Good. Doris, it's so nice to meet you in person. I think we've, some time ago, met on Zoom on another meeting. Uh, you have wowed me with your presentation. I'm going to contribute, uh, invest $2,500 from my fund into the Bridging the Gap. And I just want to uh, applaud all of y'all for showing up and just supporting, supporting God's work in your community for the children and youth. There's so many things we want to do for our kids and help them out, but uh, take concrete small steps at a time so as to prevent burnout of laity and clergy. And it's also the partnering with other community organizations and other churches, just awesome. So thank you so much for your passion, for all of your passion. Thank you for showing up. That's that's tremendous support for God's work here and just uh, your love for your pastor. Thank you so much. So I will commit $2,500. Thank you. Thank you. I serve on the school board in Gainesville uh, and we have uh, a, a section of low performing students. And the thing that you 
the thing that you said that really hit home with me is the reading uh, gap. Uh, if there's a statistic, and I don't know know it exactly, but we focus heavily on it. If a if a child can't read by the time they're in third grade, they're behind forever. They they can't catch up on math or anything else. So it's it's so important, and I think it's great that you guys are doing it in your church. The other thing, the other thing, the questions I had was the the involvement by Paris ISD. Do you have commitments there, or will this help you get a commitment? This will help us get a commitment, and based on the reading proficiency, but Paris ISD was at thirty eight percent, and that is in the bottom 50% of Texas schools. So we've done some research on that, but this would get them to assist us, especially with their curriculum, how they they teach, which is a lot different from how I learned and, and many people learn. But we have people that are within the school, within our church, that will be helpful to help us be online with the with PISD, Paris and mm-hmm. School District. The thing I would like to see us do because I'm going to invest five thousand in this. I'm going to get your full ten thousand. Wow! But I think what what I would like to do as we help and and resource wise is is find a a similar type of program that you can kind of either go look at or talk to to see hey how are these guys doing it because it exists and they're very successful programs and I and I think what what someone said before is a small step is a huge step. So I'm excited to invest five thousand with you and thank you for your time. Thank you. Doris, I want to jump in here. I, we're we're uh, we're you're maxed out on sharks. I'm wondering if I could be helpful uh, from a public education advocacy space. I think, like Phil was mentioning, I'd like to walk along with Phil and offer any further conversation as part of my work with Pastors for Texas Children and that larger network to figure out who else is out there doing this type of work. So you don't have to create from nothing. There's something for you to build on and really and really expand this in a holistic way and make this $10,000 expand and grow and be shaped for not only this coming school year, but the school years to come. So I want to offer my uh, my help to you as, as needed as well. We definitely will reach out because we definitely need it. And we don't know everything, and, and that's why we have to work together to breach the gap. Amen. 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 Well, this will teach me for talking last because there's no more money to give out. I know. <laughs> when you got my proposal, I said 10000 <laughs> You want to go over? And I, you I, can... I will tell you, I'm on the school board here in Whitesboro mm-hmm. as well. Just... I've raised four boys, uh, and I know that's over there. it's hard to raise kids right now. Yeah. Uh, and these kids not only, I, I, I personally think <clears throat> what these kids need more than anything is confidence. They need to know that they have people that believe in them, that they can do whatever it is they want to do. And and we as a church community, we as just society, need to build those kids up. Again, all the money's been given, but re- I'll be more than happy to do whatever it is uh, that you guys might need. I have a business in Whitesboro okay. that we have a lot of technology, a lot of laptops, uh, some notebooks, some things like that that we really can't use anymore because our software is it's gotten too big for these computers, mm-hmm. and it's, I would much rather have them go to a good use like that than just sitting in a closet. So I, I can go through that inventory to see what we've got. Uh, maybe some we might have a couple of TVs uh, that are flat screens that we're not using anymore that I'd be more than happy to, to throw that in. We will, we will come back and pick it up, you think, in two weeks. <laughs> I will go through it on Monday. You guys are doing a great job, and, and our kids need more people like you. Yes. So I applaud all of you. Yes, thank you. Thank Good you. job. Well, um, Pastor Doris, this is a first in our Spark Tank. We, you got your full funding, $10,000, and you got the five charts that are committed <laughs> with time and efforts to help you out. And technology. And technology to help you out and get this space and become a reality. Yeah. Well, I have to thank uh, the members. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, a lot of this was their ideas. Absolutely. So, thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you for being part. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time and effort in putting this together and, and helping out the kids. Thank you. We appreciate you being here today. Thank you all again. Congratulations. Congratulations. Glad I did it. <laughs> We're excited for you all. <laughs> Thank you. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. They're excited.
excited and very thrilled that they saw what we see as a need for our church. We're so anxious to get started and to let our children know that we care. We're so anxious to bridge the gap. We, and we, we think that with the help and with the mentoring that they're going to give us, that we can do this. Yes. And we just say to God, be the glory for what he's yes, allowing yes. us Amen. to do. Yes. And I am excited about all five sharks. They are, each one of them was very supportive. Each one had a step to offer Mount Zion in our efforts to put on the bridge and the gaps with the children and the community and the, and, and the elders of the church. So we are over over jealous about everything. So we over know the top. we're just yeah. over the top about everything. And we know that with their support and their words of encouragement on today and the funds that they gave us, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens Amen. us. Amen. Amen. Pastor Dallin Morgan of The Gathering Anna is next into the spark tank. She's seeking shark support for Taste of Anna, which will leverage the church's unused property that has been vacant since a 2020 fire to host food trucks and serve as a new community gathering site. So two months ago, we were given the opportunity to use the old parsonage for Anna UMC as a new ministry center for The Gathering. And a group of us uh, came together and we looked at the space, which is the space that the Barton Down Church was once in, um, and we looked at it and we prayed over the space of what could be. And one of the most interesting things that came out was this food truck park. Um, and part of the 2050 comprehensive plan for Anna was to have a food truck park. And so we thought, what a great place. It's really close to our brand new city hall and it's going to be right next to our library. This would be a great place to be able to have community and have all the food trucks together. Hi, my name is Dallin Morgan and I'm the planting pastor of the gathering at Anna. I'm also serve as a division, or I'm sorry, the diversity and inclusion board of the city. My name is Michelle Clemens. I am a lady planter, work with the youth at Anna UMC. Um, I serve as a commissioner on the planning and zoning board for the city of Anna, um, and also built a business plan for a nonprofit that's been going two years strong now. Uh, where is this place? Currently, Anna UMC has a large lot located smack dab in the middle of Anna. Um, one block away is the beautiful New City Hall, and right next door is where the State of the Art Library will be. Directly across the railroad track is our most coveted play area, Shirley Heritage Park, and where in the next few months we're getting our train placed. Um, it's also where we have our annual Christmas tree lighting, and it's right in the middle of Hannah. Why we chose here? Um, we don't have any, a lot of sit down restaurants in Anna not a place for people to meet. We don't have event centers. So really we thought what a perfect place to have it in, in downtown Anna, somewhere where they can go. Um, Anna's comprehensive 2050 plan advocates for a thriving downtown area with a lifestyle, with lifestyle areas. And so we wanted to be able to bring that lifestyle area through Anna UMC. So the biggest question that I know as a church that we often ask is how will the taste of Anna create discipleship? So for me, there's two ways to create discipleship. One is knowing who's leading the discipleship. So first, the people who lead this discipleship uh, path will actually be the lady who are responsible for having the food trucks who show up and are doing the work in the ministry of the church. Uh, so the whole food truck park, which is the taste of Anna, is led by the lady of the food trucks. So we are simply a host site for them to come. But also we have a discipleship path, which is our three C's, which is connect with relationship, connect with God, and connect with community. Obviously, through the food trucks, we are connecting with community, not just those who own and run the food trucks, uh, but also those who come, the children, the youth, the adults, the seniors, all who come. Connecting with God, we actually have a way that we want to start to have worship at the food truck park. Uh, one of our sites that sits right next door has an enclosed play area where we intend to put really pretty tables and lighting. Uh, it's enclosed so, so children can play while we have worship. We want to start with messy church. It's outdoors. It's perfect for the spring, early summertime uh, to kind of give a taste of what the gathering will be, um, and, but it creates that intentional community. So what do we need to bring this to happen? We don't need much. 
but we do need your money, okay? <laughs> we are asking for $10,000 for the initial cost of the grading and crushed concrete, but there it are. So if you'll turn the page, the major cost is to put the uh, grading and crushed concrete down. So we are working with the new business grant through the city of Anna. We've already gone and had business meetings with them. They've actually said, Three different places have come to them wanting to do this, and we have the best site available because we're on the northern end, um, and we have the parking, everything's kind of there. Um, and so the initial cost of setup we think is $30,000. So with your help and with the grants that we are expecting and get through the city, and hopefully the other grant through the conference, we're hoping that it is paid for. And once it's set up, it's maintained by food truck owners themselves as a part of the nonprofit lease agreement that we'll have, but it's also a way for the church to have um, income revenue to help sustain the ministries of worship, of children, of youth gathering, and such. So together, this is the Tays of Anna. How many food trucks do you have commitments for to park in this space? Well, we have none with commitments because we don't have the space yet, but I uh, spoke to about 13 of them that are from Anna, and they were all very excited to, for the opportunity to have that as a place that they could stay. So you're uh, leasing this space to them or providing it to them free? So that is something we're working out with the conference. Uh, we want to make sure that we're working with them the correct tax realm. Uh, and so it will probably be a nonprofit space agreement where they donate a portion of their revenue cost back to the church. One of our, just being the gathering, one of our tenants is generosity, where we take 10% of our uh, income that we receive, our regular offerings, and give back to the community. So part of that is that we're going to ask them to do a similar percentage of their profits to give right back to the church. Obviously, you guys are versed in how the city of Anna's working, and you already are working on the grant, so it's very impressive that you're taking this to, to turn that into a lot bigger deal, a lot bigger uh, project, so I think that's great. Um, this this project isn't for me, but I, I'm, I, hope, I wish you all the success, and I think you did a great job on your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's great if people abide by the use of the space, but also there might be people who might come into the space and maybe damage the space, and so... So I just bring up some of the risks involved in in uh, creating new property. Sure, that's something I'm already working with the conference on is oh. what kind of insurance would each food truck holder need to hold, but also you know, just what type of insurance would the conference need to hold on that space if something was to happen. Um, the food trucks on their own would be insured specifically by them, so that we, the church would not be responsible for that. The most damage that they would do to the outdoor space might be the lighting that happens or the grading of the crushed concrete. Um, so we would make sure that that is covered. I think anytime you take church outdoors, you have kind of that risk of what would people do with that space. Uh, we would ask for extra patrol, but the nice thing about it is the police station is one block away. So we are in the downtown area that they're already highly patrolling. Um, and so we're not concerned as much about that as just making sure that we have posting signs, like what is allowed, when does the park open, when does it close, so that if there are people out there after hours when there's not people visible, that the authorities are alerted, like, hey, something might be going on there. Is the cost of portable toilets built into this? So the city right now is not requiring that because we have the ministry center right next door that has bathrooms accessible to them. Also, the city building is within less than a block walking distance that has that. So you would open the church for people to use your restrooms? Right. So they're okay right now. At this stage, that might change later. But at this stage, they're okay with us having designated bathroom times. Like the building is open and the restrooms are accessible. Um, they know we're not going to be open from morning to night. We can't have that house. Um, if it is something, because I have talked to the conference about that as well, if we need to have portable bathrooms, the actual cost of portable bathrooms is not a lot. It's the expense of maintaining them. Yep. So that is a part of what we're working on with the city. Um, would they maintain it like a public restroom at the parks that they're already having to maintain? Uh, this site for right now, for the next few years, is the place for us to do ministry, but we are trying to move to our permanent location. The city said if we invested in something like this, they would be really interested in buying this in a few years. Even if it's not for a food truck lot, but as the parking area 
of the trail that they are getting ready to put in. And so putting crushed concrete down and doing something with that space is something the city is interested in purchasing in the future, which is always a nice bonus. Yeah, and I, I can tell you too, I, I served on the parks um, board first and then I said, uh, served on the planning and zoning board. And the parks is really big and uh, we have matching grants to do the trail system through Anna. And this spot is just, it's like prime. So I have a feeling that in a couple of years, uh, uh, while I don't think we should fail, um, it would be perfect for the city. There's have just not a to, whole lot of land left in Anna to buy. Have y'all been to Jake's place in uh, north of Sherman, between Sherman and Dennis? It's a very similar situation. You know, I think, it, go back to where you were talking about the each vendor would be an agreement that they would then give back part of their profits to the church. And, and is that, that's going to be well understood by them? And will there, is there a mechanism to, I mean, make sure that happens? So everything we do, because we are actually listed as the North Texas Conference, would be managed by the North Texas Conference. Okay. Uh, the bookkeeping is all done through the North Texas Conference. And so... I, we have not worked through the specifics of how it would be managed other than I would probably receive a report of what's been paid and then as the managing pastor, make sure that, hey, if they haven't been paid, to follow up with them on their lease agreements. Okay. So I, I would be the interim of that. I think it's a great idea. Food trucks, I mean, we've got some here in Whitesboro that, I mean, you go out there any day at lunch and there's, you know, there's 15 cars in a parking lot and people lined up. So, uh, you know, with that, I'm willing to give $2,500 uh, to this project. I think it's good. I think it's an opportunity to get outside and meet people maybe that aren't coming to church. I think that it's important maybe somehow get your youth involved in it to where they're going out and it's a good place for them to, you know, to gather. They can bring friends, uh, you know, and have youth functions there where maybe they're not inviting people to school. Hey, won't you come to church with me? Hey, you want to go to the food trucks, you know, and, and do things like that. I think that's a, a good way to reach those, you know, that, that population. But, you know, with that, I'm, I'm, willing to give $2,500. Well, congratulations. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for um, bringing this uh, idea. Um, just know that you'll have a shark uh, who's giving you two hours and $2,500. And um, you get all our prayers for this to continue to grow and c serve as a connecting to the community. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Thanks, guys. Go. Excited! Very excited. Yeah, I'm excited. That means there's some energy behind what we're doing. So to see it from the community, to see it from the laity, to see it from those who aren't even in the community support this idea, it's really exciting. It allows me to go back to the city and say we have a little bit of stake in what we're doing so that we can further the grant that they're willing to come alongside us with.